Sometimes the easiest things are the ones that impress people the most. So today, let me share with you three amazing but really simple Excel tricks that will wow people when you use them in your work. Let's go to these ones. The third one is my absolute favorite, but do watch all of them. Let's get in. The first one is auto number as you type. As you can see here, if I type the name of Pam, as soon as I tab out, I get the number for the next person. And if I type Erin, I'll get the number for the next one. This is really impressive and extremely simple to do. Here, let me show you this from scratch. Let's say you have got a data entry form and it goes up to this much. In the number cell, we can use the sequence function. So sequence, and if I simply say sequence 10, I'll get all the 10 numbers, one, two, three, four, five, like that. But we want these numbers to be just one more than how many our values are typed in. So instead of 10, we will say sequence. We use the count a function and select this range where our data would go. So count a of C9 to C29 plus one. That basically asks Excel, make me a sequence which has the count of just one more than the number of values I typed. So now naturally you have got the number that goes up to five because you've typed up four values. And if I type the name of Andy now, I'll get six. And if I type the name of Daryl, I'll get seven. How awesome is this? Here is a little pro trick and this one requires newer versions of Excel 365. Instead of hard coding C9 to C29, this assumes that we know how far down the data goes. Many times we don't know that. You could actually give a very large re reference. So for example, C9 to C300 and use the dot operator before the 300 part, the C300 part. What this does is it automatically truncates the range up to how many values are available. So C9 to dot C300 is gonna be just this much range right now, but as you type, it becomes one more. So this dot operator is called a trim operator. It is a new thing that is added to Excel. So it may not be available in all versions of Excel yet, uh, but eventually all Excel 365s will have that. So you could use that and it will still work. In fact, here I can show you how the dot would work like. So if I say C9 dot C300, even though I'm pointing to the range large enough, it can be 300, it could be 1 million, it doesn't really matter. It will just return the values that you have typed in. So this is an excellent way to automatically truncate the things. But the cake here is this one, using sequence to auto-generate numbers as you type. Let's go to the next one. Here I've got the share prices, weekly share prices of Microsoft. And I want to know on which dates the share price jumped more than 5%. So it could be plus or minus 5%. And here is my input cell. Right now I'm looking for five. All the days on which the price changed by more than five is highlighted. So for example, here I can see that it was 280 on that day, 300 on this day. So about $20, which is more than 5% jump. But this is an input value. I can change this to 7% and I'll see fewer days or I can change this to 3% and I can actually see many more days. So how do we do this? This kind of thing is super helpful for analyzing data to immediately eyeball big changes in the numbers. And all you have to do is select this entire range and we want to highlight the entire row, but the logic needs to be built based on this column alone. This column is column C. So we are only looking at closing price to decide whether to highlight the entire row or not. That's important to know. So once you have that, you can select the entire row and I'm gonna clear the rules and let's build a conditional formatting. This sort of a thing is called conditional formatting where we want to highlight things based on a condition. So we'll make a new rule. The rule needs to be based on a formula. So we are gonna use uh, this option here, use a formula to determine which cells to format. And the formula needs to be, essentially we want to calculate what is the change from previous day. So we can use ABS, absolute change, because we care about either plus 5% or minus 5%. This cell here, the column C, but if you notice the reference here is $C, $5, 
we want to keep that in column C, but make it relative. So every row would check the corresponding share price. So I'm going to take out the dollar from five. So it becomes dollar C5 minus dollar C4. C4 would be prior day's value. Of course, for the very first day, it will be an error, but every other day it will have the prior day's share price. So absolute difference of this divided by prior day's price is this greater than dollar H dollar four. This is going to, as of now, currently check for 5%, but because this is an input, I can change this during runtime and it will check with whatever value in H4 is. So if this formula is true, we want to format those in that kind of a fill color. That entire row will be filled with that color and click OK and bingo, we'll get the highlighting done. Really simple to implement. There's actually so much more you can do with these kind of uh, conditional formatting rules. Uh, you can uh, write more complicated logic as well, but this is like the basic stuff. Once you see the power, you can use it for other things. You can also change the way text is displayed. If you go to the format, just as we have got fill color, you can also go to the font. And for example, you can say the values need to be in bold. And when you click OK, you'll see all of those values are highlighted in bold. And here is the best part. If I change this to 10% now, I can see the really significant jumps to Microsoft share and when that happened. So for example, here is one that happened in November of 2022, then March of 2023, and more recently, April of 2025. And now let's talk about the third one. And this is my absolute favorite trick. This is total must be 100% validation rule. Let's say you are building some sort of a monthly budget and you want to enter the percentage values, but you also want to implement a criteria that says the overall values together should add up to 100%. For example, right now I have got rent, groceries, utilities, eating out and savings. They all add up to 95. So I can only spend 5% on hobbies. But what if I type 10%? The moment I hit enter, I'll get this nice message that says total needs to be 100%. How do we do that? To do this, select the cells that should add up to 100% and then go to the data ribbon and click on data validation. This opens up the settings page and by default Excel will allow you any value. What we want is a custom rule that should tell Excel that the total of this range should be less than or equal to 100%. So it shouldn't really throw an error when the value adds up to 95%, but the moment it exceeds 100%, it should throw an error. So to do that, we are going to change this from any value to the custom rule. And here you can write a formula. The formula needs to be true. So whenever it is false, it will throw an error message. So here the formula would be sum of open bracket and select this range C5 to C10. And when you're typing this range as this formula needs to observe that entire range, I'm going to make it absolute. So it would be $C$5 to $C$10 less than or equal to 1. 100% is 1 as a number. So that is the formula rule. Remember, whatever formula you write here, that needs to be true for valid data and false for invalid data. And we can also specify an error alert. This alert can be anything. So here I'm going to set it as a stop style, which means Excel won't allow you to type the values if they are creating a problem. And you can put any message here. I'm going to say total needs to be 100% as the title and some sort of a message like your values need to add up to 100%. Let's click OK. And now our rule is set. If I type, for example, 10% here, I'll get this message. Let's test this out again. I'm going to clear out some of these things. So rent is 30%. We have got 70% left. If I spend 30% on groceries, I've got 40 more left, 20% on utilities. I essentially have only 20 left. Let's type 30 here and I'll get the error again. We can type 10, 10, and again, we have got no more left. But if I type even 1%, I'm going to get this error message again. How awesome is this? So which one is your favorite? Let me know in the comments. And if you want to know 10 ways in which my boss is abusing Excel, check out this video right here. And of course, if you enjoyed this video so far, give it a like, share this with somebody, and of course, subscribe to my channel. I'll catch you out there. Bye.